I want to talk to you also about Henzo. Um, his personality shines in his grappling, no doubt. Absolutely. The way he grapples, he's a pit bull. Like he's just a, uh, he's just a savage. What was it like training with Henzo in the practice room? It was, it was fantastic. Um, I, I'm very lucky. For those of you who don't know, I so only speak had, a little louder, sorry, just a little sorry. bit. Um, I only had one instructor in my life. Um, the first gym I went into was the gym that I stayed for the rest of my career. I, mm. I was not someone who went all over the place. Um, my first instructor was uh, Henzo Gracie, and he was, in fact, my only instructor. And when I first came into jiu-jitsu, my only interest was to learn enough jiu-jitsu to be able to be able to win street fights. I was working as a bouncer in New York City in the early 1990s. And um, so I had no ambitions to be involved in jiu-jitsu other than to learn how to strangle people and and uh, get out of pins and, and hold people down, et cetera, et cetera. So um, uh, I went in with very low expectations. And uh, they had a great group of guys. They were... Um, even early on, Henzo uh, had people like uh, Matt Serra and others who were very talented. They, I believe Matt was a blue belt when I entered, and uh, but he was one of the best guys on the East Coast. And um, uh, as I spent more time there, I, be, I, I became a training partner to Matt Serra, Rodrigo Gracie, mm -hmm. and Ricardo Almeida, and Henzo himself. And um, we would often train together. Um, Henzo had a brilliant and dynamic game, he used to move beautifully. There's something different about an athlete who started training when they're five years old. Mm -hmm. they, they have that, that element to their game which comes from childhood training where they, they, they fight on an instinctual level where all their instincts go in the right direction as opposed to someone like me who started at 28 where you have no instincts, you have to figure things out over time. And um, so my game was always more like a a slow analytical game was Henzo's like a fast dynamic. Machine. He was more DDS, I would say, no? <laughs> would you say? He was a DDS, uh, I mean, he, he he was a killer. He was just pure, yes. pure he offer. Put, he like, put a strong emphasis on submission holds. That's something yeah. I never forgot from him. He also put a very strong emphasis on the idea that jiu-jitsu had to be effective in both gi and no gi. Mm -hmm. and, um, and combat, yes, like real yeah. combat. And, uh, uh, and he also gave me great freedom to try anything mm -hmm. provided it, I could prove that it worked and um, uh, and uh, fairly soon after that uh, Matt Serra, Rodrigo Gracie and Ricardo Almeida moved away to open up their own school so Henzo asked me to start teaching uh, full-time. Uh, I was in their PhD program at Columbia University at the time and I had to make a decision as to which direction I would go. Mm -hmm. So um, I went with Jiu Jitsu and um, Amazing. Uh, so I started teaching full time, and then soon after that, I met you, crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> what was Hensel's greatest fight? I have my favorite fight of his. Hmm. Yeah, fight or grappling match? No, fight. We have to go by fight first because okay. he was a real fighter. Yeah, yeah. Hensel has the biggest, the, he's the most guts I've ever seen in a yeah, human being. Yeah. He'll fight anybody, yeah. anytime, anywhere, any place. What was his best fight? Um, like MMA fight. Let's start okay, with MMA. The, the most memorable one will always be his, his fight with Sakuraba because um, uh, it was a fight where Henzo was winning. It was a hit on, yeah. on all three judges' cards. Um, yeah. It was a very, very close fight. This was at the peak of Sakuraba's uh, career. Mm -hmm. uh, Henzo was... Uh, Henzo was always used to fight well above his weight category. He should yeah. have fought at 145 pounds. Uh, Henzo he was, won't cut weight. Like, he yeah, he care. refuses to cut weight. And considers it disgraceful. So, um, <laughs> so. We're here eating salads and, and doing aerobic, and he's like, <laughs> "So um, he fought, you know, people much larger than himself. So he's fighting soccer. He's ahead on all three cards, and all he had to do was hold on at the mm. end, and he would have won. Yeah, but instead he went for an attack and got caught, and um, uh, had his arm badly broken and refused to submit. Um, so I think that one shows both his character and his technique. Uh, in a very good light. He went with someone bigger, stronger than himself, um, was able to do extraordinarily well to the point where he was judged ahead on all three judges' cards, but also shows his character in so far. He wasn't satisfied with just uh, winning by decision. He went for the finish mm. and it cost him. And then in that cost, he showed something else, which is true to his character, which is great personal bravery. Uh, so I think it, it showed it almost every aspect of his, uh, of the strong mm. features of himself as a man and as a, uh, as, as a jiu-jitsu fighter. 
My favorite fight of Henzo has to be, I think, the Pat Miletic fight. Hmm. That was later in his career. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because he came back later in his career. He beat a former UFC champion who was also later in his career. It was the fight, like, what would have happened if they met years ago? And we always had that question. And I, when I think Henzo, I think guillotine. Like, the one guy you don't want to wrap your... You don't want him wrapping your neck. Yes. He had an outstanding arm and guillotine. He's you one don't, of the great early yeah. innovators of it. You don't want Henzo to wrap up your neck. Like, he'll, he'll crush you. I remember I've rolled with him once. I had the luxury of rolling with him once. And, it, like, obviously he knows every sub, but guillotine, like, you're not getting out. Yeah, particularly the arm in guillotine. Mm. That, was his, that was his forte. He actually rematched Sakuraba after that. I was there, actually, in, in a Morris, match. Yes, in a Morris, yeah. and he beat him handedly. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Henzo, he's a... If you guys ever met Henzo, if you've ever been in the practice room, he's such a special guy. Yes. Very special guy. He makes... Yeah, see, he's probably the most charismatic person in judo. Too. Yeah, he makes everybody believe. Yeah. No, we're going to be successful. He's like he's a natural uh, leader. He 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 brings people together. It's an, it's incredible. His energy it's it's really amazing. 